All right, here's us doing our correlations in Microsoft Excel using our data analysis tool pack. So we've got a couple of uh, we got a set of, couple sets of data here uh, that were provided by Solkind, um, <clears throat> and we're looking at some survey data, uh, number of books read. Stop that by. Um, education level. We go to the, our data tab, data analysis, click on correlation. I've already been playing around with correlation, so it's already collected, selected for me. And then just one just simply selects all of their um, rows that they're interested in, all the data. I do have labels, so I did select labels, and I'll put the output right there. And here's my simple output in Excel. Let me, let me make this just a little bit larger for you. So what we can see is that we've got, um, always when you do a correlation table, you get one-to-one -one correlation with itself. So we've got our two variables running along the top up here, number of books and num education level, number of books and education level. Uh, so we can see where this intersection here uh, happens that they, um, they they end up with the same um, with the same um, correlations. So it's one to one, You're correlating against itself. So the numbers that we're interested in are these ones that are not ones. I mean, every once in a while you will get things that perfectly correlate, but usually you'll get something between uh, uh, negative one and positive one. And what we have here is education level is positively correlated with the number of books read. <clears throat> at 0.55, actually 0.56, uh, when we round that down to um, a smaller number. Come on, there we go. So 0.56, which if you remember back from uh, Ice Cream and Crime, we can see. Uh, Remembering back our um, to chapter five, ice cream and crime, our correlation levels are are um, very strong when it's 0.8 or above, or negative 0.8 to negative one. Remember that the strength is not doesn't have anything to do with the direction. Um, the 0.6 to 0.8 is a strong relationship. 0.4 to 0.6, which is what we have here of the variation between variation correlation between um, education level and number of books read, is moderate. And we see 0.2 to 0.4 is weak, and uh, below 0.2 is really a, a weak to to really uh, a no correlation. Uh, and some of that you'll you'll um, you'll all right. So that's that's that. Let me go ahead and go on over here to the next one, uh, and we've got motivation and GPA. Uh, and, and even though there's there's more cases, it's not going to make any difference as far as Excel is concerned when we do a correlation. So we'll go ahead and do motivation by GPA grab all that data. We'll put our output right here. Why not? Click that and click OK. Got labels in the first row. And again, we'll, we'll zoom it in. And we've got uh, 0.43 as our uh, correlation. So um, moderate correlation, again, just like uh, we saw in the in the earlier example, um, with a 
actually it's on the bottom end of the moderate so it's 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 moving towards weak so um, now uh, these two examples where you have number of books read by education level they have they're they're kind of they're related <laughs> obviously uh, but which causes which you know it does it does level of education um, uh, cause um, this um, phenomenon or is it the number of books that causes the level of education so certainly certainly the the fourth grader in here who's read 28 books uh, you would expect somebody who's, who's in fourth grade to have read less than somebody who's in twelfth grade, which we see we have somebody who's read 876. Um, um, <clears throat> so we can say on one hand that education level probably caused these kids to read these numbers of books. However, one does not get to this level of education without having read this number of books. So there's this kind of this back and forth um, uh, interaction, so that's it's kind of co-varies, I would say. So now this example, the the motivation by GPA example, uh, we've got um, again uh, a, a, a subjective level here, um, uh, you know, something that somebody either took on a test or they they rate yourself on. 1 to 10, how motivated you are. All these values are between 1 and 10, so you know it could have been could have been a Likert type of a of a of a survey instrument, and then the GPA is is their GPA, you know, it's whatever they got on their their um, various coursework. Now, which causes which? You know, if you're highly motivated, you know perhaps you're. Um, willing to put in the work to get a good GPA. You know, you want to go off to Yale or Harvard or one of those fancy schmancy schools, uh, you're going to do the work, so you're highly motivated. However, there's an equally good argument to say that um, a person's um, GPA would then motivate somebody. So. Okay, I've gone through courses, work. I get my GPA. You know, it's really it's really rocking here. I've got myself a, you know, a 3.6 GPA or or a 3.8 GPA or 3.4 looks like is the highest in this data set. What is the highest in this data? 3.9. So I've rocked through. I've got a 3.9. Hey, suddenly I'm believing in myself. Maybe I can get into Harvard. Uh, and suddenly I'm motivated because I got the high GPA. You know, chicken or egg? That's always the question with. Um, um, correlations. Now, so um, if you're if you're stuffing al along on a Macintosh and you don't have the data analysis tool pack, you can do motivation. I mean, correlations just fine. Look at that; it came up too. Correlation came up. So, correlation is real easy to do in uh, in Excel or in any other spreadsheet. Numbers or Open Office. So you can do motivation, forget the labels, by GPA. And again, you know we don't want labels in the in the in the function because the functions don't read labels; only the tool pack does. And we click OK. Lo and behold, what do we have? We have the very same uh, result. <clears throat> you know, it's just as easy to do this um, as it is to do it the other way. And um, uh, <clears throat> Um, if you're in, oh, I've, I've already done this for you in um, um, in Excel using the data analysis tool pack, and it's just as easy to do it. Uh, motivation, G. Whoops, I could just copy this. Why don't we just copy and paste, Bob? Copy, paste, and then we'll copy. And paste. Oh, that's much simpler. Uh, saves myself time. So, hey, back up here. So, 
So we've got motivation by GPA, which I put in the wrong place. Okay, we've got motivation by GPA, motivation by motivation, motivation by GPA, motivation by age, and then motivation by gender. And we've got GPA by by age and gender, um, uh, age by age and gender. Well, anyway, you, you get it. So if you're suffering along again under a um, um, a um, uh, regular spreadsheet, you, you, you might just want to, you know, go ahead and name your ranges. So we got motivation. And then we've got GPA or GPA. Then we've got age. Oops, 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 oops. I didn't got you gotta be real careful to get all this all this stuff in there. Age. Hey, look at that. I'm I'm really not doing very well on this. They're probably gonna say it. We've already used age. Yeah, it did. Rats. So we'll just say student age. So that oh lucky I messed up again. I tell you, I'm just having a heck of a time here. Equals three. We'll just call it three. I got it this time, I think. And then finally we've got gender. So, and I know what you're saying, gender. Gender? Um, what do you mean, gender? Uh, gender is not a number. Gender is M or F, or male or female, boys, girls. Well, um, when you have a bivariate um, nominal variable, you can create what's called a dummy variable and you can start to mimic doing correlations. And this is really more done to set you up for what's going to happen in um, um, in um, regressions in the next chapter. So, so equals um, correlate and then we had array one is um, motivation by GPA. Click OK and then we've got equals correlate Parentheses, motivation, comma, three is what I ended up calling that because I made such a mess of it. Let me, let me do my numbers here. Uh, get this down a little bit to where it's a little bit more nice. Okay, so um, we see that uh, gender is negatively. Um, correlated with motivation 0 0.01 that is extremely tiny that's almost zero so so folks uh, we're just going to have to say that in in this case um, uh, we just don't have a a uh, uh, any relationship gender is not at all related to to motivation um, now th had this been a higher number six or or an eight we we would say that as a person moves towards, or as the distribution moves towards being more uh, zeros, in this case, whatever zeros is, if we classified it as, let's say, uh, females, because zero becomes before, comes first in the numbers and F comes first in the alphabet. So as our sample moves more into females, the motivation goes down. Although in this example, by an infinitesimal amount. So just that's clearly within our, our range of, uh, of, of chance. Same thing with age and GPA. Not much relationship here. I say this is, uh, th these are 13 to 19 year olds. Say they're in a um, uh, uh, 
a class to finish your um, um, high school diploma early, or what are those things called? GPA, no. Um, high school equivalency. So they're, they're taking a high school equivalency um, uh, exam. Uh, and um, and so we're looking at, at various uh, factors in them. So we've got different age groups. So it's not like this is all a bunch of 10th graders. So And finally, we can see that GPA and motivation remains what it was before because that didn't change. And I didn't grab all the ones because, you know, I don't need them. <laughs> uh, um, uh, and I don't need gender twice over here. So I can actually just get rid of that if I want to. So. That's uh, correlations in a nutshell.